Hi there, this is a couple of moments questions, quite challenging. So if you want to pause and have a go at the question, then I'll take you through the solution. So we're going to have two in this one, and then there'll be a second video with another two quite tricky you know, examples as well. So I'm going to go through the answers now. By answer, I mean the answer to this one. So hopefully you've had a go at this, and a bird sits on a uniform rod suspended from vertical wires P and Q. So it gives you a diagram. The rod has a weight W and it is 15 centimeters long. So weight W, so we'll have that acting in the center. So that's that one. And the weight of the bird is 2W and acts at a distance X. So it says, what is the value of X when the tension in P is half the tension in Q? So straight away, looking at that, I would write that the tension in P is half. So I could call that T for tension and Q would be two times the tension. Now, the key to this question is realizing that the total force acting downwards is W plus 2W, which is obviously three lots of W. And the total force acting upwards is 3T. So obviously, if 3W equals 3T, that would indicate that the weight and the tension are the, uh, one and the same. So tension is equal to weight. So what we can do now is actually get rid of these Ts and call that side W and this one 2W. Now from there, it's pretty straightforward. We just need to take moments from P. So I'm going to sketch a clockwise equals anticlockwise. So the sum of the clockwise turning effects or moments is equal to the sum of the anti-clockwise turning effects. So from P, just go from left to right and deal with each force and distance as we come to it. So the first one that we come to is, so what I'm gonna do actually is indicate whether it's clockwise or anti-clockwise. So if you pinned P, the first one W would be clockwise. So that would be in the middle. So it's seven and a half times W. So we'll leave it in centimeters, that's fine. So 7.5 lots of W. Plus, what else is clockwise? Well, we've got this 2W times X, so that would also be clockwise. So plus 2W times X. And that's it for clockwise. We have got an anticlockwise. We've got this force Q, which is pulling upwards, so that would pull anticlockwise. So we've got 2W times 15, or 15 times 2W, 15 times 2 is 30. So 30 lots of W. Then we just need to do some, some relatively straightforward maths. So we've got to take the 7.5 W to the right hand side. So then we'd be left with 2WX equals, so 30 minus 7.5. So that would equal 22.5. And then to get X on its own, we can cancel these Ws. So X will be equal to 22.5 divided by two, which if we round up a little bit, gives us a distance X equal to 11.3 centimeters. If you got that really well done, that's a tricky example. So I've got one more example in this video, so let's move on and have a go at that one. So here's the second question. So, if you want to uh, pause and have a go at this one, and then I'll take you through the answer and see how you get on. So the diagram below shows a vase placed on a uniform shelf that is supported by a steel wire. So the fact that it's a uniform shelf indicates that the automatically, you should be looking for this, is that the weight of the shelf would act in the center. So let's go back to a blue pen. Oops. So the center of the beam is obviously 0.25 meters because it's 0.5 across. So I'm going to draw a line there. And the beam is a mass of two kilograms. So that's two times G, two times 9.81, which is 19.62 newtons. And then the vase has got a mass of 0 0.5 new, uh, kilograms. So 0 0.5 times G, 9.81, would give us 4.905 newtons, which is half G. So now what we can do is we can we can now finish this question. I'll show you how it works. It's, it's still pretty tricky. 
So we want the tension. So the tension of the steel wire would act in this direction. I'll call that T. And what we're going to do is take moments from the hinge. And I'll start doing this. If you've not seen this type of question before, it might be quite challenging. If you have, hopefully it's straightforward. But as always, we can say that the sum of the clockwise moments is equal to the sum of the anti-clockwise moments. And what we're going to do is go from the hinge. Now, the reason I picked the hinge is because obviously that hinge will be impacting against the wall. So there's, and it'll be like pulling into the wall and down a little bit. So basically we've got a for, some random force acting in that direction and we've got no idea what it is. So we've got no idea what it is. We need to cancel it out. And the way to cancel it out is to take moments from that point, which is why we've picked A. So clockwise, let's go from left to right. So from the hinge, the first force that we come through, come through, come to, is the, the weight of the beam, which is 19.62 newtons. So we need to do the force, which is 19.62 newtons, multiplied by the distance. So we've got the distance in the middle, so half of 0 0.25, which is obviously a quarter. So that's the first moment done. Plus, we've got the second one, which is the bars, which acts clockwise as well, obviously in, in that direction, like that. Let's get rid of that. So the weight is... 0 0.5 kilograms, which is 4.905 newtons. So 4.905 newtons multiplied by the distance. Now the distance to that one is simply the, the full distance to 0 0.5 subtract the 0 0.05. So the 0 0.5 minus 0 0.05 gives us 0 0.45. Bracket that. Um, that's the clockwise done. And then equal to the anti-clockwise. Now the anti-clockwise is a bit of a funny one. Well, if you've not seen it before. So the anti-clockwise would be the the wire pulling up. Obviously, it's got to be perpendicular to the to the line of action of the the line of action of the force has got to be perpendicular to the distance. So what we're actually looking at is this force here, which I'm going to call the tension vertical. So what we can do is find the tension vertical. So the distance to it is already given as 0 0.3 meters. So force times distance would be vertical tension times 0 0.3. So what you need to do is do these calculations with your calculator and divide the left-hand side by 0 0.3 and that'll give you the vertical tension. So the first bit, 19.62 times a quarter is 4.905 plus, and then we need to do 4.905 times 0 0.45, which is 2.3. 20725. Now, because it's an intermediate calculation, you should technically use at least five significant figures. So, you know, we might as well use six. Uh, and that is equal to 0 0.3 lots of TV. So we need to add the left hand side, divide by 0 0.3. And the tension vertical, or the vertical tension, is 23.7 which will be fine, but 0 0.75, you should get Newtons. Okay. Now what we do from there is the vertical tension is basically, we could make a triangle here. So that value there is the 23.7 Newtons, 23.7 Newtons. And we've basically got a triangle. We've got 23.7, which is, we've got an angle here, 30 degrees. So that's the opposite. And the, the tension in the steel wire is the hypotenuse. So you should know this from GCC maths. You've got opposite and hypotenuse, so it's Sokatoa. So obviously we've got O and H, so that'd be sine. So it'd be sine theta. So in this instance, sine 30 is equal to opposite divided by hypotenuse. So the opposite is the 23.7075 divided by the hypotenuse, which in this instance is the tension in the wire. So essentially we've got the 23.7075 divided by sine 30. And sine 30 is a half. So that will give us a tension, the actual tension in the steel wire, which is equal to 47.415 newtons. Or 47 newtons. If you got that right, that's uh, really well done because that's quite a tricky question. And I hope you found that helpful. And there's going to be another video, part two, which is a, a couple more exam style questions. And I hope you found that useful as well. But thanks for watching and I'll speak to you soon.